the travelling players. They came into town in their covered wagons and with permission settled in the square where they could enjoy water from the fountain and the townsfolk would know they were there. With practised ease they opened up the stage, set the props, hung their costumes out to air. The tumbler threw loops around the market and the boy girls drew on lips and hair. The travelling actors put on colours rich and gay to charm the crowd and bring them to the play. With market done and evening prayers and victuals, a crowd gathered, keen with apprehension. The dusty players hovered in the wings, calmly prepared their presentation, smiling to each other to behold such a swell. The quiet bustle held a certain tension. Collectors standing ready at the skirt and the dips, stretching fingers as attention turned to the prologue, striding out to present the argument to catch the crowd. A silence utter fell as the pipe and drum played him on. He stood. A moment of breath held and spoke. It rolled across their staring heads, a mighty line around the market knelled, and soon to follow came a comedy, a teasing yarn of love and greed, of intimacy compelled and then averted, truth coming good in the end, bright in the night as tears and laughter welled from every other crowd that had before, but here the audience stayed silent, hushed, quiet as an undertaker's door. The final capers cut, the company took their bows beneath a starry silence, Watch the people of the town disperse under a moon full but bereft of sense. Without a word they took their banners down, packed their gear, intent on getting swiftly hence. Gathered by the fire for a paltry supper and small beer, expecting naught in recompense, found the troops captain gaping at the hall of pennies Farthings, shillings, plenty there, more than plenty there for all. Never in the leagues and years spent travelling had such a take been had on just one night. The actors and clowns were used to ravening and pinched stomachs, ground teeth, ribs tight, preening for a penny, singing for a scrap, often from a village in a race or a fight. Hand and mouth was their living, their tools in trade. Hands covered mouths now in confused delight. Fellows, said the captain, from this luck we might borrow, forestall the moving on, and play here again tomorrow. Now the second night they played a sprightly farce of lovers confounded by twins and wives mistook for dolls. The boys in frocks kicked their legs high, their eyes wide. The husbands' wives lashed upon the asses and behinds. The judge was brought a cropper, hanging lives in the balance, and the constable took them all down with the strength of his asides. But through all the folly and the tears spent, not a sound was heard from this crowd intent. Now another hall justified another night, a tragedy, the saddest tale they knew of a king losing first a son, a daughter, then a wife, dwindling as the sun grew, calling to the gods who no answer gave, his unknown grandchild, dedicate and true, guiding in his blindness, 
left this old man crying in the catacombs at the ghosts he slew. And silent in the dark, not a tear was shed. Soundless, the gathered watchers sat and stared. As the moon waned and turned, the players rode their luck, dusting off an old and faded history or two, reviving another groaning rump, whose corkers gave themselves much hilarity. But though each night the audience returned and silver coin came in without parity, the barren field of silence with them brought remained a leaden coffinful of mystery. Till the youngest even, and full of their own song, let their voices drop, wondered what they did wrong. As winter approached, the troop began to fail. One by one, or in dance pairs they went, took their own parts to improvise along the way. Silver in their purse, eager to be spent, perhaps on reassurance from a loving eye. The dippers felt the cold, the tumbler bent an ankle on the ice, the drummer burst his skin. Soon, just a captain in his tent, with his chest of gold, grieving for his son, who too old to play a girl, married and was gone. But the people of the town returned each night with pennies in their hands. Now he would not take the coin, but still performed a play, sometimes extempore, the knight, the maid, the rake, the croaking, shivered beggar, sometimes too the unknowing fool, falling flat to break a heavy moment with a clownish relief, if only for none but his own sake. His, the only voices of a knight, the slap of a stick across his own back, and not a clap. As seasons passed, the people built a house with a stage inside for him to play and helpers to ignite the lights, and there they came to him, after the time to pray, with their fielding done and cheeping and their feeding, and silent now at the end of day, with their moon-eyed children on their laps, to hear what the mighty-voiced man had to say. Silent he stood, holding not a breath, but biting back a curse, before finally speaking in a whisper, broke and hoarse. It is the nature of my world that when the play is done, when the show is capped, the players will offer up a humble bow to our loving audience, who will rise enraptured and with one applause make good our work, <laughs> make safe our hearts show themselves captured in their laughter and their tears by our story. Why have our shadows in your silence been so trapped? Why, bereft of any show of love but coin, have I so endured? Whence this disjoin? Only one stood at last after most an hour had passed, and gazed at his people near. His elders gave a nod, and then he spoke in an unused voice, hesitant but clear. Sir, uh, sir, sir, we have not had one as you before, standing high above our masses drear, uh, speaking with such power and fire from the deepness of the belly. It made us fear for the power of ourselves. We did not know if we showed you too much love. Would you go? A silence yet again. To make an eyes blink seem loud. A held breath in everyone. Then, a single hand sounded sharp against another, rifled through the silence. Done once, it brought another, 
from another side of the house and another. Rising thunder bubbled, burst, hooves approaching on a plain. Then a gushing, wild, roaring river ran across a waterfall, free flying in a crowd, such a rampant sheet of lightning through the crowd. The old actor stood impaled. The mask broke, and like a human loved, he wept. The young one stepped from the throng to raise his hand to show them one and all he was not alone, and all of his tempestuous pity was drowned in the storm of care they made his own. Nor stop the applause, the cheers, the roars, till every last raindrop of love was shown. Cupped in an enclosing sound, hands displacing air into a warm embrace, rippled through with care. They waited then together for the waves to break into foam, to recede from the shore into gentle silence. Then, with paint smeared across his face and a catch in his voice, the captain began his prologue once more. <laughs>